This presentation is for everyone involved with the Life to Eagle process at the district level. So if you're a, a Eagle project coach, if you're a project approver, if you sit on an Eagle board of review, if you're a district verifier and you want to know the whole process, that's, this is the process uh, given for people at the district level. So this presentation is for you. So in this presentation, we're going to look at the district roles in the Life to Eagle process. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, how a project is approved and uh, the uh, administrative process of so the paperwork, uh, how that's submitted, and then how to conduct an Eagle Board of Review. And then we'll talk about some of the other things that come up. Uh, appeals and uh, boards of review under disputed circumstances what can what can go wrong or what can be unusual in the process we'll try to hit some of the high points of those and give you an idea of what to do if you're in those sorts of circumstances let's take a look at the process and where the district and council and national get involved in the life to eagle process so normally a scout will work with uh, their unit their scout master or a person in their unit normally called an eagle advisor uh, on the getting ready for their project and making sure that they get their merit badges done for eagle and their position of responsibility and other advancement that they need for eagle the project is normally identified within the unit and uh, the beneficiary is contacted. The beneficiary approves the project proposal. The uh, unit committee approves the project proposal and the scoutmaster approves the project proposal. At that point, usually it's then presented to the uh, district project reviewer who looks at it and makes the final approval so that the project can go forward. And that's usually the first time the district hears about the project. Around this time, a project coach is assigned uh, to the scout. The uh, project coach is a district position and what they do is they're there to help the scout with the detailed planning of the project. Uh, if there are any execution issues, ideas for execution of the project, and uh, the final paperwork, compiling all of the final paperwork after the project is completed uh, to be submitted for review. The scout will submit all of the uh, final paperwork to through a web portal uh, to the council and the council certifier uh, will be notified and the council certifier will check uh, norm the application and uh, all of the dates that are in the application make sure that the scout is registered uh, make sure there are no conflicts with uh, registration and rank dates and things like that uh, the uh, council certifier will uh, contact the scout or the unit if there are any issues and they'll work through the issues. Once the uh, application has been certified by the council certifier, then uh, the packet is handed off to the District Eagle Board Review. Uh, the responsibility of the District Eagle Board of Review at that point is to review the uh, packet, make sure that the workbook has been uh, signed, the final uh, project uh, report has been filled in, the uh, signatures are proper on the final project report, and that the uh, list of ambitions and life, life purpose and list of uh, achievements have been submitted and the reference letters have co uh, come in. Uh, 
Uh, if the reference letters have not come in, then it's the district board of review's responsibility to reach out to the people on the application that have been identified as references and obtain their reference for the scout. And then uh, finally, the board of review is scheduled with the scout and, and then you guys uh, do a conduct a board of review. When the board of review is finished, the uh, people that sat on the board of review sign the application and it is submitted to council for processing. Uh, it through, and it's, that's done through the portal as well. The council certifier then is notified by the district board of review that the final application is there and the council certifier uh, completes the processing of the application and submits it to national. Throughout this entire process, it's good that the uh, Eagle coach is involved with the scout. Uh, so make sure that if the scout is making any changes to the project, that uh, those changes are appropriate and we, they don't, the project doesn't have to be reviewed or re-reviewed because uh, substantial changes have been made in the project. So the project coach kind of sits there throughout the project to make sure that no major issues come up. It's best that the scout uh, engages with the, the district early and often, and that, that's a good position, that project coach position is a, a good vehicle for the This is our Eagle Scout page. Uh, so it is good to go to the Eagle Scout page on the council website here and take a look at all of the uh, steps here. Review this about once a year because they do tend to change. Um, the first file here, read me first file, that's very important to read uh, every year in case anything in the process changes. Uh, take a look at that file. It's a two to three page file that explains the process, uh, the current process to the, the scouts and the parents and the unit leaders. Uh, towards the bottom of this list is the Eagle paperwork portal. Uh, we're talking about the Eagle paperwork portal uh, a number of times uh, in this presentation. This is the portal that the scouts use to upload their uh, final paperwork for review. Uh, also, the portal is used by those who are uh, filling out references. Uh, they submit their references to the portal. And uh, you can also put uh, documents in the Scouts folder uh, using the portal as well. And then down towards the bottom of this page are some videos. The Life to Eagle video is meant for scouts and parents uh, to look at to uh, tell them what the process is, uh, mostly about the project, but the entire process, including uh, positions of responsibility and merit badges and things like that. And then over to the right is the unit uh, Eagle Scout Advisor uh, video, and it's the same process, but it's uh, at, from the vantage point of the advisor at the unit level. If you go down further on the page, uh, you'll see a section that says Eagle Project Ideas. And then under that, one of the bullets is Notes for Eagle Project Approvers, Unit Leaders, and Boards of Review. That's your user guide. Uh, if you are a project reviewer or if you are a, on the district board of review about what to look for in an Eagle project. Now we're all used to a one inch binder for the scouts to keep everything in and calling that an Eagle packet. We are going to continue to advise that the scouts keep a backup copy of everything that they, all the paperwork that they 
use for their Eagle project and uh, Eagle application and all the other paperwork in the process and keep a copy of that in a binder, including the photographs. Uh, so we're going to continue to, to ask them to keep everything in a binder and to bring that binder to the Board of Review. However, as they fill out their paperwork, we want them to submit that paperwork to through the portal to, for us to review. That way we can review it electronically. Uh, we can cut out some of the time it takes to move the stuff around and hopefully um, have a, a system where we don't have a single point of failure. More than one person can can access this uh, the portal. So uh, we will be asking the scouts to fill out the paperwork and submit it to the portal. One of the things uh, is to note is that we really, really want to encourage the scouts to fill out the paperwork with Adobe Acrobat Reader and type in to the booklet and type in to all of the forms that are used for uh, this process. So rather than them uh, printing the Eagle packet or the Eagle workbook out and then filling it in with pencil and then taking a photograph with their phone and uploading that photograph to the portal uh, where where nobody's going to be able to read uh, the the uh, images, we really want them to fill out the workbook by typing it in, and then sending the PDF file to the portal, uh, so we can read it and so you can read it. So from the get go, from your very very first meeting with the scout, we want you to encourage them to type into the forms rather than filling them out in longhand. Now we can't mandate that because that would be adding a requirement and that requirement's not there, but we would like them to type it in if at all possible. So we encourage them from the very first meeting to do that. Okay, we're gonna start with the district project re uh, review. Uh, that happens after the Scoutmaster has approved the proposal, the uh, beneficiary has approved the proposal, and the unit committee has approved the proposal. Uh, they can approve it in any order, uh, but you're always the last person to approve it. So after they have approved it, then it comes to you. Sure. Now the project proposal is written in a book uh, called the Eagle Scout Service Project Workbook. That book workbook is available from download at our District Eagle page. And that's where people should go to download the document. Uh, that way they have the current, uh, most current version of the document. It's very important that they download it to their hard drive and open it in Adobe Acrobat Reader. It will not work any other way no matter what it looks like is happening, they need to download it to a hard drive and open it with Adobe Acrobat Reader. We get a lot of uh, problem calls because they're not following that direction. Okay, so they open it and there's a number of sections to it. The very first part of the book are, are, is an introduction and instructions and they need to read the instructions. Not only do they need to read the instructions at that first part of the book, but they need to read the instructions throughout the book. And they should do that prior to submitting it to the uh, district approver. So one of the first things the approver should be asking is, have you read the workbook? When the scout signs the approval section of the workbook, they say that they have read the instructions. So remind the scout of that and make sure they have read them. 99% again of the problems we encounter on the administrative side have to do with people not reading instructions. Once they do that, uh, there is the second section of the uh, book and the second section is that proposal section and they should have that filled out um, before they bring it into the district, 
the scout should have signed it, the uh, unit committee should have signed it, the beneficiary should have signed it, and the scoutmaster should have signed it. That's showing that all of those people are in sync and they all agree that it is a, an appropriate project for an EGLE project. So at that point, uh, the project approver will look at the book and will uh, work on uh, and will sign off on the proposal. So let's talk about the proposal a little more. When evaluating the proposal, have the uh, a meeting with the scout. Have it. It's an informal meeting. Uh, shouldn't last more than about 20 minutes. Try to get everything done with one meeting. Uh, we're trying to discourage this, the going back and forth. That you need to make this change. Come back and see me uh, after you make the change. Uh, try to resolve all issues in the, this meeting. Uh, that way, uh, the, the scout can proceed with their project and we are not being becoming a hindrance just administratively with the scout coming back over and over and over again. Remind them that they should have read the workbook and, and this is if they haven't read the workbook then you might want to have them take five minutes and read the workbook uh, right then and there because it just satisfies so many issues. I mean it just answers so many issues that come up uh, during this whole process. As you're reviewing the proposal sections, what you need to, to do is make sure that the proposal meets the five tests we're, that we're going to show you uh, further on in this presentation. You can't require anything more than what is requested in the proposal section. So you can't ask for any additional uh, information uh, other than what is at being asked for in the proposal section. It's a good idea if they have before pictures and there is a part in the proposal section to put before pictures. As we mentioned before, the uh, service project workbook has to be used. Uh, that's the vehicle that uh, the BSA requires of us to insist the scout use and they will be typing into that uh, workbook and again remind them to type into that workbook because they are going to eventually upload all this stuff to a web portal and there's a place at the end of the uh, proposal section for signatures showing approval and and that's where you're going to sign it. Make sure when you sign it that uh, the other signatures are present because you ha you're the, always the last person to sign. As we mentioned, this is a informal meeting, uh, so keep it light, keep it uh, courteous and kind, and so that the scout doesn't feel like they're uh, being interrogated or anything like that. Uh, the scout can choose to have a parent or a unit leader or some other adult present. In fact, you probably want to request that of the scout so that somebody else is there who can remember what you, you are asking the scout to do if you ask the scout to do something in addition to what they have in the proposal. Also, if you're asking the scout to do something in addition to what they have in the proposal, make sure it gets into the proposal because that proposal is what is going to be looked at at the Board of Review. If the scout says in the proposal that they are going to do something and they do it, then and you have signed that, that that's okay to do for a EGLE project, then they have satisfied the requirement because they did what they said they were going to do. So make sure that the proposal section reflects everything that the scout is going to do. Okay, these are the five tests for an EGLE project. If for a project to pass um, and for you to approve it, it has to pass these five tests. And we're going to talk about the five tests in detail. 
The first test is that the project provides sufficient opportunity to meet the requirement. Well, what's the requirement? The requirement is Eagle Scout requirement five. It's printed in the Scout handbook. It's just like every other requirement. You have to satisfy this requirement. So let's read the requirement. While a Life Scout, plan, develop, and give leadership to others in a service project helpful to any religious institution, any school, or your community. The project must benefit an organization other than Boy Scouting. A project proposal must be approved by the organization benefiting from the effort your unit leader and unit committee and the council or district before you start. You must use Eagle Scout Service Project Workbook number 512-927 in meeting this requirement. That is the requirement that has to be met by the project. No more, no less. Let's break down this requirement. So it begins while a life scout. So work on the project, including planning, begins after the life scout board of review. They can't do the project as a star scout. They can't purchase materials for the project as a star scout. They can't get approvals of the project as a star scout. They must be a life scout to begin this process. They can think about what might be a nice project before they're a Life Scout, but they can't start the process until they're a Life Scout. Plan, develop. The project has to be planned and developed by the Scout. The detailed planning doesn't happen at the proposal stage, it happens after the project's approved. But what you need to see in the proposal is that there is opportunity for the scout to plan and develop the project. If the project is handed to them already packaged and all the scout is providing is labor, then there's no planning and there's no developing involved and it's not an Eagle project. So what you want to see in the proposal is, and there is a section or two in the proposal in the workbook where he, he or she shows you the plan to plan, what planning has to be done to make this project work. And that's what you want to see, and that's what you want to encourage the scout to put into their project. Don't categorically reject projects that on the surface may not seem to require enough planning and development. For example, blood drives. In the past, we have categorically said no blood drives no bike rodeos because they're all can programs and all you're doing is providing labor. However, you can have a blood drive that does show, show that the scout has done planning and they have to develop some things to make the project work. For information on how to make a do a blood drive, uh, that would be a good Eagle project look on our Eagle Project page, the council website, and there's actually a couple of uh, outlines there of how a scout can do a blood drive and it still would be a viable Eagle Project. So don't just categorically reject projects who are, because you think, well, it's not gonna provide planning. Let the scout prove that they're gonna plan and develop the project. Give leadership to others. Uh, others means at least two people. We can't give the, the scout a minimum number of uh, people that they have to lead. It, it's as many people as it takes to get the job done. The BSA has said, well, if you really need a minimum, the minimum is two people other than the scout. 
the requirement is to give leadership to others. Most EGLE projects will require a number of people to get them done. Uh, and the people can be anybody. They don't have to be uh, scouts. They could be other people that are not scouts. Uh, make sure that the scout is not saying, well, my parents are going to help me get this done because very often the parents will end up leading the project and the scout is actually labor for the parents project. So the parents can be the other people, but if that's the case, you have to make sure that it is very clear that they are not leading, that the scout is leading the project. Every project must be evaluated case by skate case. Is there opportunity to give leadership? For some scouts, leadership is second nature. And for other scouts who have never had to lead before, leading just a few people is a challenge. So take a look at it and take a look at the scout and see is this really an opportunity to give leadership or not. This might be a good time to talk about um, projects that are routine labor. If the troop always does something, let's say they always do scouting for food, then the troop already knows how to do uh, a project where they go out and they leave leaflets uh, at the doors, steps of, of different houses, and then they come back a few days later and they pick up bags. So the troops already knows how to do that. There's really very little leadership involved in doing something that the troop already knows how to do and is pretty much routine labor for the troop. So you want to avoid routine labor, uh, especially if it's what the scout normally does or what their troop normally does. Even if the project is not exactly the same as scouting for food, maybe it's picking up toiletries to give to the poor. Okay, it's not scouting for food, it's scouting for toiletries, but it's the same setup and it's still the same routine labor. So be, care be careful on projects, make sure that the scout isn't just doing something that's redundant for the troop and they're not going to really be able to give any leadership. Scouts, districts, and units shall not establish requirements for their number of people led. So we can't tell you, other than the fact that there has to be two other people at least, which is national policy, we can't tell you that there's a cap on the number of, of people that that scout has to lead. There's no minimum, and you can't say it either. Uh, and a unit can't say it either. So it, there, that's a national policy. We can't tell you that the makeup of that group has to be all scouts or all non-scouts or anything in between or all adults or all youth. None of the makeup of the group is not established and cannot be established by us or by you or by the unit. And we can't tell the, the scout how much time they have to work on a project. There's no 300 minimum hours. There's no 100 minimum hours. There's no hint saying, oh, well, you know, our average hour in our district is 300 hours per project. Well, the scout's not dumb. He'll hear that, and for him, that will mean you're establishing a minimum. You can't do that. Uh, what I said before, don't expect scouts from different backgrounds with different experiences and different needs to work towards some arbitrary standard. Okay, the scout has to be helpful to any religious institution, any school, or your community. So any religious institution is pretty uh, self-explanatory. Any school um, is any non-profit school or your community. Well, your community, how is that defined? Well, normally it's not an individual. However, there could be a case where an individual, doing something for an individual would help the community. I'll give you an example. 
if a person has a, uh, a as an old lady who is an invalid who lives in a house and her front yard is a mess it's got old cars in it it's got weeds it's got uh, grass that's dying it it's just a mess so it's a community eyesore cleaning her front yard and replacing the lawn and doing some uh, some irrigation work there would contribute to the welfare of the community so in that case helping an individual would be helping the community so that would be okay for an eagle project there's always a question of am i talking about local community statewide community what and for the bsa the definition of community is worldwide so helping a uh, a village in uganda would count as working for your community now the beneficiary should not be a commercial nature uh, or a business now there could be a business operation uh, that's provided as a community service an example here is a public park there's a company that in front of the company's headquarters is a park area that is open to the public and that area needs a refurbished park bench well, an Eagle project to refurbish that park bench that's open to the public would count as an Eagle project, even though it would be for a private business. The uh, organization that you are doing the work for need not be a registered nonprofit. It could be the city. It could be a public works area, um, public um, parks. It could be national forest. Um, and it doesn't even could be a, a private organization it does not have to be registered as a nonprofit if there are any questions and you're on a borderline um, call the national uh, council advancement committee and we can make a judgment call on that benefit an organization other than boy scouting so projects can't uh, benefit uh, Boy Scouts of America can't benefit the council or the district. You can't do it for a council camp. Uh, you cannot uh, create a, a scout shed for your troop. However, you can do a project that would benefit the chartered organization uh, for the troop. That's fine. It could also benefit a another scouting organization like Girl Scouts. That's that would be okay. It just can't benefit the Boy Scouts of America, the districts, or the council, or directly the unit. So looking at uh, evaluating the proposal, make sure that it matches requirement five no more no less and don't require proposals to include more than what is described in the eagle scout service project workbook in the proposal section these next few slides talk about the scope that has to be put in the proposal uh, the detail that re is required in the proposal section doesn't have to be a lot of complexity it's not a report like we used to require it's simply enough information that's in that proposal section and that is in the boxes and that is enough to meet to to meet the five tests so that there's enough information there um, realize there is no requirement that enough documentation is presented in the proposal that it can be handed to another scout and the other scout can execute the project that would be a project plan and that in in fact a detailed project plan and that's not what the proposal is meant to be every attempt i mentioned this before every attempt should be made to complete this approval process in one meeting so that the scout doesn't have to keep coming back over and over again 
Uh, they should be challenged to work on their planning action steps next. This is a good time to assign an Eagle Project coach to help them and their beneficiary plan uh, the pro detail planning of their of their project. An Eagle Project coach is not mandatory. And the scout can opt out of that that uh, guidance. Uh, but for more detail, uh, see the Guide to Advancement section, Eagle Scout Service Project Coach. And we do have a separate video for the coach. But the coach basically is there as a district person to help get through the project steps uh, and get through that final paperwork uh, to submit to the district so that the scout doesn't run into any issues down the road. Now the requirement says that the proposal must be approved before the project starts. So if a scout starts fundraising or begins a project before it's approved, then they really should go out and find a different project. Uh, they can finish the project they're working on. It makes a good troop project, but it won't count towards Eagle advancement. Now, if a scout has a circumstance that's compelling, usually having to do with time, the scout may be allowed to carry on and have their proposal or project approved after the fact. Especially if you would have approved it anyway, somebody might, the, the unit leader or somebody said, oh, you don't need to get the district approval, just go ahead and do it. Uh, and it's a good project and the, pro the scout does it and then they come back to you after the fact and say, well, we already did the project. If you would have approved it anyway, then uh, it's just an administrative issue and go ahead and uh, it's up to you, but you can go ahead and approve it. If you were not have approved the project before and the scout comes to you with it uh, and you and said, well, I've already done it. At that point, the scout either picks another project, adds on to the project to give it enough leadership uh, or whatever is missing so that you can approve it and then completes the project uh, to your satisfaction and then and then you can uh, say it's been approved. Otherwise, the scout starts all over again. Fundraising brings up a lot of questions. Um, for, to begin with, projects cannot primarily be fundraisers. You can't set up a project specifically to raise money for a beneficiary or a cause. Um, fundraising is only permitted to provide materials or supplies, food, uh, for the project pay fees that you may have to have. If, it's, if the contributions uh, add up to less than $500, then you do not need a fundraising application. Uh, however, if it's more than $500, the scout needs to fill out a fundraising application which is located in the Eagle uh, workbook. So they, it's a one-page application. They fill out the application and sign it. Uh, contributions greater than uh, $500 cash from one business um, needs to be approved at the council level. If it's less than that, it can be approved at the district level. The only time a candidate would not have to fill out a fundraising application uh, is if the $500 contributions come from uh, the candidate, parents, relatives, unit, chartered organization, or beneficiary. Uh, in that case, he doesn't. Uh, that doesn't count towards the total that's needed for the fundraising application. The um, district approver can approve the uh, fundraising applications if they are uh, less. If they don't have a single contribution of $500 in cash or more. 
And for more information, go to your notes for Eagle Project approvers, unit leaders, and boards of review. That document has a couple of pages on fundraising. Routine labor is not normally considered appropriate for a project. So if the um, project is to pull weeds um, at a football field, well, the school normally um, pays somebody to go out there and pull weeds in a football field. It's routine maintenance. Normally routine maintenance is not approved as a project. So he shouldn't, you shouldn't approve a project that's routine uh, maintenance, routine labor. Now it is possible that um, for one scout routine labor uh, is different than for another scout. And so look at the scale and impact and learning that's going on as the scout, this scout, this individual scout that's in front of you is going to go through to make this project happen. So for what might be routine, you know, for a, per, a boy that lives on a ranch may not be so routine for a boy who lives in the city. Uh, some common misconceptions uh, on projects. Eagle Scout service projects are individual matters, so you can't have more than one candidate receiving credit for the project. You can't have a couple of brothers doing the same project and they both get credit. Uh, there is no requirement that a project have lasting value. Uh, a project can be a collection, that's fine. Any plans completed after the project proposal has been approved by the council or district or between the scout and the beneficiary. The coach could look at it and add value, but he can't reject it. He can't demand more planning. Um, nothing is signed off in that middle section. That middle section of the workbook could be blank. He, the scout uh, shows up at a uh, board review the fact that he has completed the project shows that he has planned something, he did some planning. So even though we don't tell the scouts that that middle section can be blank, uh, it could, or half of it, or a good portion of it, or some of the blocks in the middle section could be blank. In fact, some of the blocks probably aren't pertinent to every project. Under no circumstances shall project approval at any point in the process be withheld for reasons that have nothing to do with the project. When we're evaluating the project, when we're approving the project, and we're signing off on the project, all we're looking at is the project. We are not looking at anything else. We're not looking at scout spirit. We're not looking at anything else. We're just focusing on the project. Okay, here's uh, requirement five again. And remember, it's just like every other requirement out there. Uh, Scout's BSA requirement. The scout has to do what is in the requirement. No more, no less. They have to satisfy what is in the requirement. Here are the five tests again. Now we, we were looking at the first test and we've spent all of our time up till now talking about the first step, which is the most co complex of the steps. The rest of the steps are easier to, uh, to consider. So let's go through the, the other tests, the other uh, four tests. The project appears feasible. The, the scout is not trying to build a house or build a ship or something that's not going to be able to be done uh, within a reasonable period of time. Safety issues will be addressed. The scout has uh, either st stated already how they're going to address the safety issues uh, and that's in the proposal or that they uh, intend to uh, address sa safety issues. So they've given you enough information that you, you know that any kind of safety issues that you can think of about the project that the scouts looked into it and is addressing them. Action steps for further detailed planning are included. There's actually a section, as I mentioned before, in the proposal section on how to, they're going to plan to plan. And so this, what steps still have to be made 
for further planning, further detailed planning, uh, and that filling out of that middle section, uh, but that they intend to do further detailed planning. That needs to be included in the proposal. You know, kind of what are your steps to plan? And the scout is on the right track with a reasonable chance for a positive experience. So it's going to happen. They've got time. It looks like it's going to work. Then you can go ahead and approve the project. So the project is, is approved by district and the scout can start work. If you are uh, rejecting the project and the scout feels that they've mistreat, been mistreated or their proposal was wrongfully rejected, you need to provide them with a method of redress. And for our council, uh, the, their first level of appeal is to the district advancement chairman. Uh, if the district advancement chairman upholds the reviewer's uh, rejection, uh, then the scout can appeal to the council advancement chairman. Changes in a project should be shared with the unit leader, project coach, and the beneficiary. Um, again, now we're going to talk about the project code at the district level. Uh, if it is a major change, uh, something where the scout at one time was going to put in a bridge across a trail, and now the beneficiary is saying, well, instead of a bridge across a trail, uh, we decided to pay somebody else to do it, and they're going to do it. So instead of you guys doing that, put in a flower bed in front of the, in front of the headquarters. Well, now the project has changed. The scout should go back to the approver and get uh, another approval for this new project because the project scope has completely changed. If the scope of work is drastically reduced, then uh, the scout should go back and get approval before he goes to his board that that reduction in effort is okay. When the scout uh, talks to the project approver, is a good time to remind the scout to start recording all of their time uh, in the hours spent on the project. Now that would include the scout's hours and anyone the scout is talking to as hours. So if the scout talked to their scoutmaster for one hour, then the scout has used one hour of project time and the Scoutmaster has used one hour of project time. They should be tracking hours uh, by the person that they're working with so that eventually when they when they have to do the report at the end, they need to, to be able to break out the hours by uh, their hours that they used, all scouts and uh, scouter hours, and then all hours for people that are not part of the organization. So they need to be able to start tracking hours uh, for, for everybody that's, that's helping them and working on the project with them. Uh, we have found that most uh, scouts shortchange themselves on the hours worked on a project uh, because they don't keep track of the hours. And at the end, they try to, to estimate the number of hours and they always estimate low. Here's that engagement flow that I showed earlier. And now we have finished the project proposal stage. And the district reviewer has looked at the proposal and has approved it. And then right about there at the end, uh, the district pro uh, reviewer gives the contact information to our next person. And that is the project coach. So the District reviewer gives the contact information of the project coach to the scout and the uh, writes down the scout's contact information and gives it to the project coach so that the project coach can engage the scout. That way we're continuing to observe what the scout's doing as he gets into his planning and execution phase of his project. 
so the coach now has the contact information of the scout that was given to him by the uh, project approver and the coach then makes the initial contact he makes the first call and they he arranges to have an initial meeting we'll go into this in a little more detail but after they have the initial meeting uh, and the coach uh, tells the uh, the scout go ahead and start your planning the uh, coach mentors the the scout through the project plan section of the workbook and what needs to get in there then the candidate uh, with the beneficiary plans the project and the, they get the beneficiary and the candidate uh, plan the project. The coach checks at the end to see if he can add any value to the project plan. Then the candidate executes the project and then at the end of execution uh, the coach gets together with the candidate one more time and they uh, coach helps him with the project report, the final report, uh, lets him know what needs to go in there, um, tells him where all the paperwork is and uh, shows him how to fill it out and then all of, uh, all of that uh, paperwork gets into the packet and the packet when the scout is done with all of his requirements gets submitted to the uh, verifier and the coach, uh, his engagement ends. Let's talk about the qualifications for being an Eagle Project coach. The, uh, the coach must be registered uh, in the BSA. There's no Eagle Project coach registration code, so they should be in, but they need to be registered. And they can be registered in, in any position. They could be a district member at large. They could be at a committee chair of a unit. They could be a scoutmaster. Uh, they can be in, in, in any position, um, but they need to be registered as an adult. Uh, and they obviously have to have be current in youth protection training um, and understand what the policies are there because they're going to be dealing with the youth. So um, they have to keep their youth protection training current. That means that every two years they have to renew it. Uh, youth protection training expires every two years. And they have to be approved by the district or council advancement chair. Uh, they can't just raise their hand and say, I am one. But they need to be appointed and approved by the district or council advancement chair. When the uh, district or council advancement chair looks for somebody for this position, they should look for somebody who understands the Eagle projects. Um, <clears throat> what makes a good project? Um, something about planning. They, they, there's a lot of planning that's involved with uh, with developing a project and so they should know a little bit about how to plan a project and uh, they should know a, or can learn what is the process, the whole Eagle, Life to Eagle uh, process that's being used in the district and in the council. Um, and we will be towing a lot of resources to how, how so that people can grow into this uh, position. This is some information that the uh, project coach needs to know and understand. It also is information that the board of review members need to know and understand. So let's talk about this a little bit. Uh, the guide to advancement is the uh, source the definitive source in the BSA for all policies and procedures uh, pertaining to advancement. So if there's ever a question about policy or procedure in advancement, then uh, we go to the Guide to Advancement. It's available online at uh, scouting.org slash advancement and it's available in hard copy at the Scout Shop. It's revised about every three years. There's a lot of chapters to it. The sections that are um, pertinent to what we're going to be doing is in Section 2, Advancement Defined, uh, which talks about advancement in general. Section 8, which has, uh, concentrates on boards of review. And then Section 9, which concentrates on the Eagle Scout rank. So anybody who is involved with this Eagle process at the district level really should 
look at this guide to advancement and read sections 2, 8, and 9 and understand them. Uh, also, we pointed out our Eagle Scout page before and we'll keep pointing that out to you. That's still a pertinent resource. Where do coaches come from? Coaches come from the district and they are appointed by the district advancement chair. Uh, we leave it up to the district on how to organize the pool of coaches uh, and how to assign coaches to Eagle candidates. We recommend that the, you have one coach per sub-district uh, and that would probably give you enough coaches to cover your Eagle candidates. However, in some districts that may be too many coaches and other districts it may not be enough and you may have to increase the number. We'll leave it up to the district advancement committee to figure that out. Now another term that's used a lot is Eagle Mentor or Eagle Advisors. And those terms refer to somebody at the unit level who counsels the scout. And I have another slide coming up that talks about this in more detail. This is the other slide and it has the advisor role on the left and it has the equal coach role on the right. Uh, the advisor is someone who normally is in the unit and the scout already knows. Uh, the person normally engages the scout at, um, shortly after the life order review and stays with the scout as a coach and a mentor until the scout uh, receives his Eagle rank, passes his Eagle Board of Review. Uh, the goal uh, and focus of the advisor is the successful achievement of the Eagle Scout rank. And they're usually a long-term, uh, daily, uh, weekly interface with the scout uh, and an advisor that works with the scout all the way through. They worry about positions of responsibility, how many merit badges the scout has received and his project and everything. The Eagle Project coach uh, is concentrating on the successful fulfillment of requirement five, which as we all know now is the Eagle Project. And he's appointed by the district to shorter term and he's really coaching and consulting on the project and then the final paperwork. So the role is different. This person on the right is the subject matter expert of the Eagle Project. The person on the left works daily with the scout and reaches out to the approach to the coach when he, they have questions dealing with the project. Okay, so you, again, you serve as an advisor or a consultant or a coach, your resource. Uh, for um, for him to go to uh, to find out hey is what what is the process here I need to fill out the, what do I have to fill out uh, in my workbook uh, that sort of things um, you are not to your job is not to uh, secure resources for him or make his decisions or plan his project that's his job. Your job though is to kind of help him a little bit on uh, on how to plan his project or what parts of the of the workbook to fill out to plan his project and um, encourage him uh, to you know secure resources, create a, a timeline, um, a time log, things like that. Uh, and you know, assist him in trying to make wise decisions. But again, you're not really that involved with the project. You, you're again the, the kind of district expert on uh, Eagle projects. Um, this is, you're going to be one of his adult uh, mentors on the project. So, you know, make, make sure it's a positive experience for him. Um, make sure everybody's using logic and common sense. You know, nobody makes any big edicts coming down. Here are some guidelines for you as a coach. Uh, adhere to 
what your job is and kind of stick with what your job is. If you want a job description written out, it is in the Guide to Advancement uh, in Section 9, which is the Eagle Scout section, and the topic is 9.0.2.9, and that lists basically your, your job functions uh, that we're going through with this presentation. You're going to receive the scout after his project's been approved, and you you personally don't have the authority to dictate changes to the project or withdraw the approval that was previously granted to a project. So um, that's not part of your job description. If you see something is really off at this point, I'll talk in, in another couple of slides about what you can do about it. And strive to make uh, your involvement with the Scout a positive experience so that the Scout's encouraged to keep going and get his project done and get his eagle. Okay, even though the, uh, the verifier gives the Scout your contact information and tells the Scout to expect a phone call from you and you give him a call, the, um, the scout may choose not to accept your assistance. So uh, we don't tell the scout that you're optional, but you are as a coach, and the scout doesn't have to accept the assistance of a coach. So if the scout says, oh, that thanks, but no thanks, I don't need your help, um, you know, tell the scout that you can add value and you can help him. If he still says no, then he does not have to use your services. When you have that first meeting with the scout, talk to him about how the proposal approval process went, what kind of experience he had. Uh, if anything was brought up during the proposal uh, process uh, that uh, was suggested by the approver uh, and make sure that that is now being incorporated into the project. Uh, the plan section of the Eagle Service Project Workbook requests uh, a lot of a lot of information about the project as he's planning it it's a good time to sit the scout down look at the planning section of the workbook look at the proposal section where he talked about planning the plan and then have him start working the plan section actually start planning the the detailed plan now you and he are not going to be doing the detailed planning together. What you want him to do is go back to the beneficiary and the two of them do the detailed planning. Um, point out anything that you see obviously in the proposal that if if he uh, that needs to be addressed in the planning section, and if he misses it, he's going to have issues. So make sh see point where he's going to. Uh, need to do planning and, and additional planning, you know, any hurdles that he may have to overcome. And make sure that's in the planning section and that he, he addresses it and knows to address it in the planning section. And then uh, have him go off with the beneficiary and fill out that middle section. And when they're done, then have him come back to you. Say, when you're done with your planning, with your beneficiary, before you start working on the project, come back to me. I'd like to review the, the proposal or the planning section. Once, when you do that, the idea is not to become an obstacle. The idea is to add value to the plan and then send him on his way as quickly as you can to get him into execution as quickly as you can. Again, your job is, is to provide added value, not to be a roadblock and not to be a gatekeeper. When you're talking to the scout, uh, show them the publication called uh, Navigating the Eagle Scout Service Project, Information for Project Beneficiaries. Uh, it's located as a separate publication uh, on our Eagle Scout page, but also it's inside the workbook. So um, if you're looking through the workbook, there should be in the back of the workbook um, this guide. It's a one or two page guide that, you, that the Scout can give to the beneficiary, which kind of explains uh, what an Eagle project is. So it's 
It's a nice handy guide to give to the beneficiary to explain the ins and outs of an Eagle project. Um, encourage the scout to call you if he has any questions uh, or he needs advice um, before he makes radical changes to his projects, for example. Uh, he probably should touch base with you. Uh, things like that. How to handle changes, so as long as we're talking about changes. Uh, it's you know life happens and uh, things can change if there is a substantial change a major change to the project then the scout should go back to whoever approved the project and get an authorization from that person in writing I, email uh, or some something that from that person that says yeah we discussed the change and the change is okay um, now the change could be it could be anything but a, a major change in a project would be something like instead of uh, putting in a flagpole at the school uh, he's now uh, putting in a flower bed uh, or instead of uh, building a bridge they are going to do some trail restoration uh, you know it's very often a beneficiary changes their mind somebody else does something something happens and the project changes when that happens uh, you don't have the authorization to change to approve the change um, it has to go back to the person who approved the project and that person then need needs to approve the change um, make sure that uh, once the uh, plan is done um, encourage the scout to show you the plan before he starts execution For one thing it gets another set of eyes on the plan to make sure that he's you know, to walk through it with him to make sure that he's not forgotten anything um, and the other is uh, it, it kind of helps put in that, a, a milestone there between the planning process and the execution phase so he's not like planning a little bit executing planning a little bit more executing um, that can work and um, but what we really would like to see him do is plan it and then execute it so you've sent the scout on his way to work with his uh, beneficiary and come up with their project plan. Um, and tell the scout to come back when he feels that he has his project plan completed for you to look at it. So when he comes back, uh, review the plan uh, with the scout, the strengths and the weaknesses of the plan. Have the scout think about risks. What risks are there with the plan that he has in place? Uh, discuss any leadership challenges he may face. Um, you might want to meet with the, count, with the scout, his parents, or unit leader, or beneficiary if you have concerns. So if you're seeing something and it's looking bad, you might want to have a, another meeting uh, with the, somebody uh, who's working closer to the scout uh, on, the, um, on the project. It is not your responsibility or anyone else's responsibility to implement his plan. Uh, again, it's the scout's project. It's the requirement that he has to satisfy, not his parents. This isn't Cub Scouts. The scout has to do the project and implement the plan. Uh, and any final design issues really are between the scout and the beneficiary. After you've given your, your uh, input to the plan. It's really up to the scout and the beneficiary to finalize the plan and to go into execution. So they can do that on their own. They don't need to meet with you again uh, after you've given your input. At the end of the project, the scout should come back to the coach uh, with a filled out project report. Uh, it's a good time to remind the scout to type in everything in the document uh, using Adobe Acrobat Reader and typing it into the workbook itself. Uh, 
the you can review what he put in the report he or she put in the report and you can give them uh, suggested improvements and then uh, they need to uh, submit their final paperwork into the portal and so this would be a good time to remind them uh, where the portal is and where they have to upload all of the uh, documents to the portal. When you're reviewing the final report with the scout, the quality of the write-ups and, and that everything is signed is important, but they're simply uh, supporting the effort. What the effort is and what the order review is going to try to determine is, was there planning and development? And was there leadership to others? And was the project helpful to the community? So uh, review the rest of the paperwork uh, for the packet with the scout um, and all the paperwork is available on the council website in the Eagle section. Um, there is a checklist there. Have them download the checklist and go through it because that'll make sure that they have everything done. Uh, the Eagle Scout rank application, we recommend that they print it uh, from Scoutbook, that they get a PDF file from Scoutbook and use that because 90% of the application will have been filled in by Scoutbook and all the dates, all the merit badges, the right merit badges, all that stuff gets into the application correctly. So we recommend that they do that. And uh, if they can't do that, uh, if there's no one in their unit that can download it from Scoutbook, then uh, we do have a blank application on the website. They can download that and fill it in. The uh, statement of ambitions and life purpose and a listing of positions is a form they have to fill out as part of the requirement. Uh, they fill that out uh, and uh, the reference letter form uh, is there on the website. Now the reference letters have changed. What, what they do on the reference letters now is they, uh, they download the form, they fill out the header which has the scout's name and the scout's member ID on it. Uh, the member ID can be gotten from uh, the scoutmaster or somebody in the unit. The, uh, then they send that form to the reference and the reference then fills out the form and uploads it to the portal. To upload it to the portal and identify the scout, they need the member ID. So that's why the scout puts the member ID on the form. The scout doesn't get involved with the references after they send the reference form to the uh, reference. The uh, Scouts BSA history report uh, can, comes out of either Internet Advancement or Scoutbook, whichever the troop uses, and uh, has all the information on the Scouts uh, advancement in the troop. And that's optional, but it's really useful in completing uh, anything that's missing from the application or, or anyone has any questions about anything. So after uh, you you have them make sure they compile all that information. Uh, once it's all filled out and everything is signed uh, from the scout's point of view and the unit's point of view, then it all gets uploaded into the portal. Uh, and I'll tell you next where that portal is and how that works. Uh, discuss the uh, Eagle board process with the scout and make sure that they have contact information if they have further questions. This is the Eagle process page again uh, at the council website with those uh, enumerated steps and items. Uh, the portal is number nine at the bottom. Notice that there are uh, the other things that we talked about, the Eagle checklist, uh, the application. This is the blank application. Again, we recommend they get it from Scoutbook. Uh, the Statement of Ambitions and Life Purpose and the Letter of Reference uh, form. This is a flow chart. Number eight here is just a flow chart of the process in case you're interested. 
And then number nine there is the Eagle Paperwork Portal. So what we recommend with the paperwork is that they make a, a hard copy of everything, but they've been working off a of soft copy. They've been working off of uh, Adobe Acrobat. They've been typing everything in. Uh, we would like them to get signatures, the final signatures of uh, the uh, for the final paperwork uh, in the workbook, which is the beneficiary, the scoutmaster, and the scout signs the final project uh, report. We would like them to download the final signature page uh, of the workbook from this site. And so when they download this, it's just the single page. It's the it's the final pay, signature page for the final report. And they they get that page and they send that um, to the beneficiary to sign electronically and they give it to the scoutmaster to sign electronically and they can sign it electronically. And that way they don't have to uh, be scanning stuff in or taking pictures with their phone, they can use that uh, as well as the rest of the workbook that they have typed in and they send all of this stuff to the portal. So everything is has been done electronically. It's all been typed in electronically uh, except for the project approval at the very beginning, which was uh, probably signed by Inc. Uh, but the rest of the stuff is all electronic and they and they upload it to the portal. So what they do is they click on, uh, they, they have a copy of everything and all of that's in the binder. So they, they try to keep a, a hard copy of everything in their binder as a backup. And then they click on the on the, the paperwork portal and they upload all the electronic stuff. So once they click on that uh, line, it brings up this paperwork portal page and it looks something like this. And it has a list of the documents that they should be uploading. And it has a form on the bottom of the page that they will fill in. Uh, and so we'll go to the bottom of the page next. So on the bottom of the page, uh, they have a place for to put their member ID. And what will happen is when they upload the, the files, it will go into a SharePoint folder that is labeled by their member ID. So um, that's how we keep the different scouts separated. So that is needed, that member ID is needed uh, for this, this process. So they need to get their member ID from their unit. So they put in their member ID, they put in their name, and they put in an email address uh, where the system will send a verification that the files have been uploaded. They can drop the files here, or they can click on the button with the up arrow, and it'll bring up a browser that they can browse the, uh, their files and upload their files to the system. Then they click down where it says send files and that actually sends the files to uh, the folder uh, up in SharePoint for them. When they have everything there uh, and they don't have to worry about reference letters. Again, the references will upload their own letters so they don't have to worry about that. So once they have everything else there, then they click on this bottom button that says they're ready for final review and that will notify council to uh, start the review process, the final review process. So as we've seen, this is not meant to be a, a weekly engagement with the scout. There may be four touch points involved. Uh, the first one would be after the candidate gets his uh, project approved and you have a, your first meet, initial meeting with him and talk about uh, planning and how to do the project plan. Uh, one after the project plan has been developed and before execution where you're looking and reviewing the project plan with him and 
uh, talking to them about risks, talking to them about any additional things that need to be in the plan. And then after the project is complete, uh, before he does his final write-up, uh, you talk about the, how to do the final write-up. And then right when the final write-up is completed, uh, reviewing the write-up, make sure that everything that looks good in the, in the project side of it and with the report and everything. And then going through all the additional files that he needs to include uh, with the uh, packet to give to the verifier, giving him the verifier's contact information, and then talking to him about what the board of review is like and what will happen there. We've talked so far about the first two members of the district committee that work with the applicant. And now that the project coach has transitioned his job, he's now handed off the contact information to the uh, project verifier. So the Eagle candidate now knows who to hand his packet into uh, for review to set up a Eagle Board of Review. The uh, council certifier will check the uh, Eagle application for dates, registration, making sure that the scout is registered during the dates of uh, that the requirements were completed, the ranks were earned, the merit badges were earned. We'll check the merit badges, make sure that the correct merit badges for Eagle are uh, in the form and have been earned. Uh, they'll check the positions of responsibility dates, and then if there's any issues that are found uh, with the application, the council certifier will reach out to the scout or the unit to resolve them. If everything looks okay on the application, then uh, the a council certifier will no, notify the district board of review that they can take a look at the packet and process it uh, for the board of review. So once the council certifier is com has completed the uh, certification, they will uh, sign as certifier on the application and upload the application uh, again to the portal and they will notify the district uh, Eagle Board of Review that the, they can look at the packet and process it from there. The Eagle, uh, District Eagle Board of Review uh, checks for the, the uh, workbook, make sure that the workbook is, uh, has the final report in it. And the final report's been signed by the Scoutmaster and the Scout and the beneficiary. Uh, make sure that the, uh, the final report reflects the fact that the Scout did what they said they were going to do in the proposal. And there's no issues there. Uh, they check to make sure this, that there is a statement of ambitions and life purpose uh, in the uh, portal. And uh, that the reference letters are uh, in the portal. Now, if the reference letters are not in the portal, what they want to do is uh, they want to check the application and see who the references are. Um, those are the ones that, uh, that whose reference letters they're looking for. Uh, if they're not in the portal, then it's the responsibility of the District Eagle Board of Review to reach out to uh, the, the people that are listed on the references and get a recommendation. If uh, within a reasonable period of time, we would like you to, from the time that you are notified by council, we would like you to schedule an Eagle Board of Review within a month of that date. Uh, so within that period of time, uh, reach out to the references. If they don't come back, if you don't get anything back from them uh, within that period of time, you have to hold the Board of Review anyway. So the other thing that the Eagle Board of Review obviously does is they schedule the Eagle Board of Review and they notify the candidate of the Eagle Board of Review. 
Okay, Eagle Scout Board of Review is usually three members on the board, not more than six. Uh, all must be 21 years of age. One of the members must be registered at the district or council level. Uh, someone from the Eagle Scouts unit uh, should audit the board. Uh, they're not required, but it's a good idea. Uh, there should not be a relative or guardian of the candidate on the Board of Review or auditing it. Uh, normally, the Boards of Review are about 30 minutes long. Uh, it should be extremely rare that a Board of Review takes longer than 45 minutes. The Eagle Board of Review is always held after the Council has certified the application. That way we know everything's okay with the application. The Eagle Board Chair works with all involved parties to schedule date and, uh, the date and time and place of the Eagle Board. Uh, the Board of Review cannot be denied or postponed due to unresponsive references. We talked about that before. If a unit leader or unit committee fails to approve an application, the candidate can still be granted a Board of Review, uh, but the lack of approval from the unit may be considered in the decision of the board. All requirements, including the Scoutmaster Conference, must be completed before age 18. However, the paperwork and the Board of Review may be done after age 18. The Board of Review can occur within 24 months of the 18th birthday with no special approval if the requirements were completed before they were 18. After that time, uh, there is a form that is filled out uh, called a uh, belated application that needs to be submitted to uh, request a Board of Review after two years. Note that the board must be held when the scout believes that they have completed the requirements and the application is verified. It is not the responsibility of the scout to ask for board review. It is the district's responsibility once the application is verified to schedule a board review and to invite the scout. The board review should be scheduled at a time that is convenient for the people on the board review and the scout. So it should not be something that uh, only that the border that the district is saying you got to come at this date, and you even if you can't make it because you have to work, you know you, you're going to have to get off work and come to the board no matter what. It shouldn't be that way. It should be a convenient time for both the scout and the people that have to sit at the board. So what does a board of review agenda look like? Uh, what do you do during those uh, 45 minutes that I talked about? So the first 10 to 30 minutes is actually not part of the board of review. It's kind of a pre-board. Uh, it's not part of that 45 minutes. In that time, you're looking at the Eagle Packet. So the board should assemble and review the Eagle Packet uh, without the scout present. Uh, that should give you a good idea of what he did for his project and uh, the dates that he earned all of his different ranks and badges. After, when the uh, Board of Review actually starts at the beginning of it, go ahead and introduce yourself, uh, introduce the other people on the board, uh, and somebody should be introducing the scout, and if nobody does, just, just introduce it, each other. Um, then the scout should talk about what he did uh, on his project. What was his project, how he showed leadership, and what was it like. After that, uh, review the scout's uh, scouting experiences and leadership experiences outside of scouting, and talk about the Eagle Rank and the importance of the Eagle Rank and giving back to scouting as an adult. And that should end the discussions in the interview with the scout. Again, it shouldn't be a long, drawn-out inquisition. It should be you know, 30 to 35 minutes in length. Dismiss the, the scout from the room and then deliberate. And you have to have um, 
everybody has to be in agreement on the board. Nobody can dissent uh, for the scout to advance. So going in a little bit more detail, um, you know, welcome the, sc the scout to the board. M a lot of boards in our council uh, ask the scout to recite the oath law motto, slogan, and outdoor code. Uh, you can do that, but it is optional. You cannot require that the scout be able to recite these things, uh, and if he doesn't recite them, he fails the board. Uh, that would be adding a requirement that just is not there. You cannot add a requirement. Nobody but the National Advancement Team can add a requirement to the Boy Scout requirements. Eagle Scout service projects must be valued primarily on impact. Uh, how did they impact the beneficiary? There must be evidence of planning and development in the project. And these elements must not overshadow the project itself. As long as the effort was well led and resulted in an otherwise worthy outcome ac acceptable to the beneficiary, then accept the project. The project beneficiary can stop work on a project at any time that they want it to stop. And when that occurs, the, the scout really should be going to the district, either to the district approver or to the district coach and asking for advice at that point. And the district needs to make a judgment call. Uh, has the enough work been done on the project to satisfy the intent of the requirement? And if so, then the project should go forward and, and go to the Board of Review. If you find it at the Board of Review that, that, that this has happened but the scout has hasn't gotten any uh, a review already by anyone in the district. Take a look at the project and if it looks like there's enough that's been done to satisfy the intent of requirement five, then go ahead with your board review and um, approve the project and finish the board. If you find that there is an issue, what you should do is uh, stop the board tell the scout there is an issue, they need to go back to the project approver and um, work on the project and make sure that it, there's enough additional work added onto the project to satisfy requirement five. Now the scout has the option at that point, he could say, well, I don't, I don't wanna do that. I wanna continue on uh, with the board and I want you guys to make a decision. So if you continue on with the board and you make a, a final decision at the board and you decide not to approve him, then he will have to go through the appeal process, which we'll talk about later. Any plans completed after the project proposal has been approved by the council or district are between the scout and the beneficiary and they should not be required by the district or the boards of review. In other words, that middle section of the workbook is not a requirement. Uh, we, he should do it. He should do it before he does his execution. But if he didn't and still got the project done, it's the project we require, not that middle section of the uh, workbook. For him to go back and fill in that middle section after execution is a pure waste of time. A good test of any project is to evaluate its complexity. Look for elements of challenge and complexity when looking at the project. During the board, don't retest. Don't ask him or her to pass a rank requirement again. Don't ask them to recite the scout oath. And if they can't recite the scout oath, you flunk them. Uh, that's retesting. Retesting has never been allowed during a board review. Uh, it's not a new policy. Uh, down at the bottom of the slide is a quote from a handbook back in 1930s uh, saying not to retest. We do have board review guidelines and sample questions on our council website. If you go to grandcanyonbsa.org slash advancement, there is a board of review guidelines document there 
that has sample questions so that you can download that and it'll give you some ideas of uh, questions to ask at a border review. This is the, the slide that says that you can't add to requirements. Uh, there is nothing that you can, no requirement that you can add to the EGLE requirements. What is there is there. Now every rank, uh, including the Eagle rank, has a requirement of Scout Spirit. And Scout Spirit is to demonstrate uh, the Scout Spirit by living the Scout Oath, Promise, and Scout Law in your daily life. Now we don't measure Scout Spirit by counting the number of meetings they attend or don't attend, or the amount of outings they attended or don't attend, uh, whether or not uh, they like scouting or not, whether or not they're, uh, they have a good attitude or not. None of that is scout spirit. Scout spirit is living the oath and law in their daily life, period. So if they violate that, uh, let's say they steal, uh, then that could be a reason to deny scout spirit. They should have been caught at the unit level. But if they come to a board of review and they just are, just have a bad attitude about scouting, you can't uh, you can't deny them uh, the rank advancement because they did what they had to do and they did their rank advancement. And as long as they follow the oath and law in their daily life, then they pass scout spirit. You can ask the scout to explain in their own words what scout spirit is. And you can invite examples of them failing to do so. Don't worry, don't worry about merit badges. Uh, they're not part of the board of review uh, other than the fact that they needed to have been verified that he got the right merit badges for the right ranks. Uh, that has already occurred. The verifier did that work for you. Uh, so there's really no review on your side of the merit badges. During the border review, listen carefully to what the scout is saying. Listen for what they are, are saying and what they are not saying. Uh, ask them to repeat or give a different take to a situation. Uh, you can summarize to confirm understanding. Uh, try to get some feedback on scouting uh, and how they uh, think scouting should improve maybe or their troop improve. Um, again, we have guidelines for boards of review on the uh, council website at grandcanyonbsa.org slash advancement. And discuss the importance of the Eagle rank with the scout and remind him that it's a serious step forward. Ask the scout to leave the room while the board members discuss uh, their achievements. Uh, you have to have a unanimous uh, decision uh, to advance the scout. Uh, the sole basis for the decision rests on the scout not meeting the requirements. Uh, you can't set a non-requirement or a new requirement such as age. There's no requirement that says, well, you have to be 13 to be an Eagle Scout. So you can't say, well, I think they're too immature. I think they're too young. Um, gut impressions are not a basis for denying rank advancement. Uh, it has to be solely based on whether or not they did the requirements. Uh, the, uh, the, again, the decision to advance must be unanimous. We're going to go through some reasons why a border review might be denied. What, what you're going to notice here is that most of these reasons have already been addressed by the verifier and should not have gotten past the verifier. For example, a requirement was not signed off by someone authorized. Uh, if the forms that come in have already been verified uh, by the uh, district verifier, um, requirements were skipped. Well, all the requirements for EGLE had to be complete before you received the packet and had a border review scheduled. Uh, the list of merit badges in, uh, that are listed as earned is incorrect. Uh, that 
is caught by the verification process. Uh, the scout ma master signs off that the scout was active for a number of months that he wasn't active for. That is caught by the verifier. Now this is something that you guys might be able to know about that the verifier doesn't know and that's a very serious incident that would cause scout spirit requirement not to be met. If somebody brings that to the board and you guys know that's happened and uh, you talk to the scoutmaster and you find out from the scoutmaster that he didn't know anything about it, that could cause a eagle to be denied because he did not satisfy scout spirit. It would have to be a real egregious matter for him to be prevented to get, of getting eagle scout. A scout did not complete a requirement even though it was signed off. If for some reason you find out during the board that he did not do the project, somebody else did, that would be a reason to not pass him. Now the board can decide not to approve uh, or they can adjourn and reconvene an agreed upon time. In other words, they don't tell him that he's not approved, but instead they just say, well, we're not going to make a decision right now and we're going to adjourn for a short period of time and then we're going to reconvene and make a decision. But once you decide then the um, the scout ha is uh, that decision goes to the scout and the scout is informed about the decision. If the scout or his parent or guardian disagrees with a negative decision which for Eagle they probably will then the scout or parent should be given the appeal procedure. Now the, the appeal procedure is that the, the short procedure is the board writes down exactly why it was denied on paper. That is communicated to the scout, that's given to the scout and it's also filed with district. District uh, then when uh, the the parent or the scout can then appeal and they should appeal to the council advancement committee my committee when they appeal to my committee they should bring forward their uh, story and if they have a copy of what you gave them they should give me the copy of what you gave them if they don't we will go back to the district advancement chair of your district and ask for that information. So make sure that he or she has it. And then we will ask for your story. Your story though should be in that letter. Uh, then we will convene a appeals board at the council level and only look at why it was denied. If at a council level uh, the, the uh, the council agrees with your denial, then we will communicate that to the scout or their parent and let them know they can appeal it to national, which they probably will do. When they appeal it to national, it also goes through council and it goes through the Eagle uh, Services Center and is submitted to national with a copy of why we agreed with the district and on the denial. If we overrule the district and say and approve the advancement at the council level then the advancement just goes through normally and the, the scout is processed. If it goes to national, national will make a decision and it'll come back and we'll be told either to process it or communicate to the parents and the scout the, a negative decision. No matter what, deliver the results in a friendly and supportive manner. Uh, most of the time, 99.9% .9 of the time, uh, you guys will have passed the, the Eagle candidate. Uh, in that circumstance, uh, congratulate the scout. Let them know that it takes approximately six weeks for uh, them to hear from national 
and they will be mailed a certificate. They should not schedule an Eagle Court of Honor until they receive the certificate. Some common misconceptions uh, dealing with the Eagle. Only one candidate uh, can receive credit for working on one project. So two, two Eagle candidates can't work on the same project and, get, and both get credit. Only one project manager at a time, only one Eagle candidate can work on a project and lead a project. There is no requirement that a project must have lasting value. Collections are fine. Blood drives are fine. Um, they just the requirements are the five tests that we looked at. Those are the requirements for an eagle project. Uniforming comes up from time to time. Uh, we prefer that a scout is in Class A uniform with a Meripad sash. However, if it's impractical for whatever reason, or the scout doesn't own one, then we can't require him to buy any uniforming or clothing to attend a border review. So he should be clean and neat in his appearance. Uh, normally I say wear the clothes that you wear to church. Um, but again, he, we should not be putting in so many rules that he has to go out and buy clothes just to attend the border review. That's, that's not the purpose of the board. Although we want him to know it's a formal occasion and he should be clean and neat in his appearance. The scout should bring his handbook so the board can sign it, but it's not a requirement. Remember, we can't add requirement. Clothing is not a, is, would be adding a requirement to Eagle, which is not there. It just says he must pass a border review, not that he must be in a certain uniform. Um, also, the scout handbook is not required for him to bring, although it's nice if he brings it, we can sign it. Let's talk a little bit about the Eagle Project Workbook um, when you're reviewing it as in the Board of Review. The, um, make note that if the project was completed uh, and approved, and what he was approved is what the Scout did, then it meets Scout Requirement 5 as written, uh, and the project should be considered. If it's a hardship or poor use of time to fill in missing information in, in the workbook, or obtain a signature of a party who's unavailable, out of town, on travel, uh, or by some other means known to have approved it, that the person's already approved the project and we know he's approved it, then go ahead and accept it without signatures. It's, uh, remember, it's the project uh, that we require and the boards of review should use common sense. Did the project meet the requirement five or did it not? And the workbook should not be a basis for rejecting candidates based on technicalities that have nothing to do with the intent of the requirement. It would be very rare for a Board of Review to reject a project if the beneficiary and unit leader agrees that the project was completed successfully. Okay, so let's go through this process again. Uh, the scout is working with the unit and the beneficiary to identify a, a project. Uh, once they've identified a project, they write up a proposal. The unit signs it and the scoutmaster signs it and the beneficiary signs it. Uh, once those folks have signed the proposal section of the workbook, then the scout uh, goes to the project reviewer at the district level and uh, requests review 
of the proposal. The uh, district reviewer will review the proposal and if okay, will sign the, the proposal. At that point, the scout can start working on the project. Uh, at the district reviewer should give a uh, contact information uh, of the scout to the pro district project coach and the project coaches contact information to the scout. Um, that way they can work together. Uh, the, the job of the project coach is to help the scout through planning the project and the final uh, report of the project and the final paperwork and uploading it to the portal. So when all of the paperwork is finished, uh, the scout has uploaded it all to the portal and notifies by pressing a button, notifies the council certifier that all the documents are there. Uh, the scout should have also made a copy of all of the documents and put them in a binder uh, that the scout will bring to the Eagle Board of Review. The council certifier checks the application, make sure all dates are correct, uh, registrations are correct, uh, the positions of responsibility dates are correct, merit badges have been earned, uh, and that sort of thing. And uh, when uh, that is uh, t taken care of and certified, the council certifier then notifies the district Eagle Board to uh, go ahead and look at the uh, folder. The district Eagle Board checks to make sure that the project workbook is complete, the final uh, report is complete and signed off correctly, the, uh, life, uh, the scout's life, ambitions, um, and purpose document has been uploaded to the portal. Uh, references are coming in, uh, the same references that the scout has on the application. Uh, then the uh, Eagle Border Review is scheduled. The, the scout is notified. Uh, again, the the goal is to have the Eagle Border Review within six, uh, 30 days of when the council certifier has notified the district that the application has been certified. The Eagle Border Review is, is conducted. At the end of the Eagle Border Review, the application is signed by the Eagle Board. Uh, it is scanned in and uploaded to the portal and the uh, council certifier is notified that the uh, signed application uh, is up on the in the portal. Uh, the council certifier then uh, fills out the screen for national, submits the, the screen to national, that starts the final uh, Eagle paperwork process and um, within uh, six weeks of that occurring, the scout should be notified uh, by a certificate in the mail that they have uh, become an Eagle Scout. The date on the certificate will be the date of the Eagle Board of Review. Uh, if there are uh, any questions, uh, feel free to send them to uh, the Council Advancement Team at gccadvancement1 at gmail.com. On the slide are some uh, resources that you can use for more information on the EGLE process.